Welcome back to the channel. My name's Tom, and today I'm taking a look at the mall at Rockingham Park in Salem, New Hampshire. As you might be able to see from the sign over the entrance, this is a Simon Mall, and at least in 2015, it was Simon's top grossing mall. It was built in 1991, and it's currently the largest shopping mall in New Hampshire, and also one of the state's most successful. One of the main reasons it's so successful is that New Hampshire has no sales tax, and it's right next to the border with the state of Massachusetts, which does have sales tax. As a result, you get a lot of shoppers coming over the border from Massachusetts to save some money. The same is true for Pheasant Lane Mall and the Mall of New Hampshire. In fact, this mall has been so successful over the years that it put the neighboring Methuen Mall in Methuen, Massachusetts out of business in 1997 and also led to the neighboring Rockingham Mall to change from a traditional indoor mall to what I would call a strip mall. So when it comes to the question of is this a dead mall, a dying mall, or is it doing just fine? I think that it's clear that it's doing just fine. There are some minor signs of decline such as a couple of vacant anchors and other smaller vacancies, but overall, especially compared to most of the other malls I've been to recently, this mall is doing pretty well. This video was filmed on a Saturday at about noontime and it was in mid-November, so just before Thanksgiving, kind of at the height of the holiday shopping season. And as a result, it was pretty busy in here, in my opinion. It's not the busiest mall I've ever seen, but it's, it's up there. So let's take a look around. Now, if you've been to this mall before, or especially if you grew up coming to this mall, say, back in the 90s, let me know what it looks like now compared to the way you remember it back in the 90s or even the early 2000s. Does this look crowded to you or does this look empty? Straight ahead, this is where Lord & Taylor was located from 2012 until 2020. Fun fact, it also happened to be New Hampshire's first Lord & Taylor location. But this part of the building was actually not part of the mall on opening day. It got added sometime around 1993. Here's an overhead view of the mall when it was under construction, probably around 1990. And you can see that this part of the building, which I've marked with a star, just wasn't there. And then here's an overhead view of the mall from today. If you look towards the top of the photo, you'll see another star, and that's this part of the mall. The first store in there was Jordan Marsh. Then at some point it became the original location of Macy's. I'm thinking sometime around 1996 but I could be wrong about that year. Uh, it remained the location of Macy's at the mall until 2006, when the owners of Macy's Federated Department Stores bought May Department Stores, not Macy's, May, which happened to own Filene's. There was already a Filene's in this mall, so they closed the Filene's and they moved the Macy's from that location to the old Filene's location where it remains today. And don't forget, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, and hit that notification bell. I've got a lot more mall videos coming up, as well as store walkthroughs and flea markets. And also, according to uh, YouTube, apparently only about 15% of the people watching this video are subscribed. So if you're not subscribed and you like these videos, please subscribe. That would be super awesome. Thanks. This staircase here pretty much marks the center of the mall for the most part. And I would say it's the only real architectural feature of this mall that's somewhat interesting and different. And in a way, it actually kind of reminds me of the grand staircase in the Titanic. It's just not quite as grand.
Here's the JCPenney, and like at most other malls, it's been here since opening day, and it's the only remaining original Anchor Store. But for how much longer, we'll have to see. I like that kitty ride there on the left. It looks like a yellow dinosaur or a yellow snake shooting rockets and machine guns out of its mouth. I've never seen one anything like that before. But not surprisingly, there's no kids on the rides. Luckily, I remembered my quarters this time, so I figured I'd try some of the candy out of the machines. They've got a pretty standard selection here, nothing amazing, but uh, definitely a better selection than I've seen at some of the malls I've been to. The only one here I hadn't seen before, as far as I can remember, is this one here in the middle, this blue and white one called Spaced Out Candy. So I figured I'd give it a try. It kind of tasted like a blander and chalkier version of sweet tarts. So it wasn't horrible, but I don't think I'd buy it again. Over on the right is where Sears was located from opening day until 2018. The Sears was originally two floors, but sometime around 2015, Sears consolidated into a single floor, the first floor and Dick's Sporting Goods moved into the old second floor of Sears. Dick's has since moved out of the second floor, but I'm not sure exactly when that happened. And we've got an out-of-service escalator, which is never a good sign. Now sit back and enjoy the sounds of me eating candy while we stare at this escalator for a minute. Now let's move on. Now let's go on up the grand staircase and check out the second level.
between 2014 and 2015, the mall had a major renovation done. Basically, in my opinion, it got Simonized. They redid the interior and exterior of the mall. They redesigned the entrances, added new doors and signs with Simon branding, of course. A new facade, new lighting, new seating, etc., etc. They also changed the color scheme of the mall. Here's a photo of what the mall looked like sometime before the renovation was done, probably in the 90s. And you can see the color scheme used to be much darker than it is today. Here's a picture of what one of the mall entrances used to look like. And here's what that same entrance looks like today. And then here's the mall's old logo. And here's the new logo. I don't know about you, but I would say that the new Simonized Mall is a downgrade. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments. I had to take a quick stop just to look at these uh, busts of Doctor Doom and Captain America. I thought they were pretty impressive, and I've never seen ones like that before. I didn't catch the price on them, but I'd bet they're a few hundred dollars each, most likely. Like I said earlier, there are some signs of this mall maybe starting to struggle a little bit because up here on the second floor at least, there really don't seem to be all that many shoppers. You know, it's not empty, but it's not looking super busy for a Saturday around noontime. So this is the old second floor of Sears and also the location of Dick's up until again fairly recently, not exactly sure when they moved out of there. Uh, but Dick's is actually currently located on the second floor of the old Lord and Taylor, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but from what I understand, the Dick's will be moving into a new permanent location at some point in the next year or two. Not exactly sure where though.
One thing that I think this mall is missing is like a central glass elevator. Most of the malls I go to do have like a central glass elevator or something, some sort of elevator that's fairly impressive. Uh, this one doesn't seem to have any. At least I didn't see them. Coming up is the food court, and one of the things that to me indicates whether a mall is dying or if it's doing just fine is how many of the restaurants are open in the food court. And this one seems to have all of its restaurants open, so that's a pretty good sign. This food court used to have a carousel, which would have been located pretty much straight ahead, as far as I can tell. And here's a photo of what it used to look like. I didn't find online, though, when it got removed. So if anybody knows that, let me know in the comments. Excuse me. Oh. That was a hundred percent her fault. That was failure to grant right of way all day long. And of course the Grand Staircase has to have a giant Simon logo on it. So this is the old second floor of Lord & Taylor, and as you can see, it's currently the temporary location of Dick's. This was filmed back in November, so I'm not sure if it's still there today, but I think it probably is just based on what I've read about it not moving into its new location until probably, I think it's at 2026 maybe?
Here's the Macy's. We did walk past the first floor of Macy's when we entered the mall. And like I said, uh, when the mall first opened, this was Filene's. And it remained Filene's up until 2006 when they basically merged with the same company as Macy's and then Macy's moved from the old location, which was where Lord & Taylor was, over here. I was just about to leave when I remembered I forgot to do this stretch of hallway here down towards the Grand Staircase. It's not actually called the Grand Staircase as far as I know, but that's what I like to call it. And if that's not what they call it, I think they should call it that. All right, well, there's the interior of the mall, but don't go anywhere yet. As always, we're going to do a drive around and see what it looks like from the outside. Here's the building that was Jordan Marsh, then the original Macy's, and then finally Lord and & Taylor, and now the upper level is Dick's, temporarily. Here's where we entered the mall. And this is the Macy's building, which was originally Filene's.
This is the J.C. Penney building. This was originally the Sears building, and then on the top level there, you can see where it used to be Dick's from 2015 up until, I'm not sure exactly when, but fairly recently. And then the, um, the first level, which was Sears, has been vacant since 2018. Here's the old main entrance to Sears, and here's a photo I found online of it apparently just before it closed in 2018 and you can see they were using the newest version of the Sears logo which personally I'm not a fan of. Here's a picture of this section of the building when it used to be Sears. Also probably from about 2018. This is the old Lord and Taylor building, and here's what it looked like when it was still Lord and Taylor. there you have it that's the mall at Rockingham Park in Salem New Hampshire I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel leave a comment and hit that notification bell I've got a lot more mall videos and store walkthrough videos coming up and also of course flea market videos so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time